customer when we receive uh, the actual box of inventory. But in our case, we're going to imagine we're putting these into the store and we're going to sell them to all the people that, that travel into our store uh, just because it's a beautiful location. We bought all that nice furniture. Uh, ERP. So then we have an ERP. It's an Epiphone. It's an EPR. An Epiphone Riviera that we're going to buy. We're going to get five of those at 440 That's $2,200. Man, we're buying a lot of guitars. Hope no one steals them when they leave them, when they leave them at our warehouse. An EPSH. That's going to be a semi hollow body. Okay. So how much of the, and we're, how much we're going to buy four of those at 320 that comes out to 1280 and then we're going to buy an EPSP which is an which is an Epiphone Standard Pro we're going to say I'm just making these up I'm not an expert on these guitars I only have well I have two guitars I guess but I got my any case I won't get into that I don't know I'm not like a, an expert here on the types of is what I'm saying so don't expect like guitar vintage guitar knowledge to be flowing out from me here. So, but in any case, you can see that that comes out to uh, the 13,880. Now note that because you see a dollar amount here, you might think that there would be an impact, a transaction, something happening to the balance sheet and the income statement. But no, there's not because again, the purchase order is just a request. It's not actually tracking anything on a financial transactions because we haven't paid for it yet and we haven't received the inventory we could add a message down here your message to the vendor please give us the guitars we really need them make sure to put them in the lock box with the with the delivery person because we've got some kind of shady characters laying around the streets they're like in the gutters like right next to where the shipping point is and then we can attach attachments if we need to we've got the cancel button down below the clear button we can print it also preview it within uh the printing here so here's the preview process there is our form so that looks good i'm going to close this back out and then we've got make reoccurring so if this is going to be something that's happening on a reoccurring basis we can of course make it reoccurring and then under the more we can copy it so notice that this is some of the purchase orders can get quite complex, especially in a job cost system when you're ordering material. So you might have a situation where you want to copy the purchase order so you don't have to add all the lines over again. Uh, you, can, you can delete it. You can add uh, audit history. We could save it. And then over here, we've got the save and new, save and send, which is probably most likely the case if we had an email system, which is often the case these days. And we're just going to save and close it, however. Let's save and close it. Let's see what happens. K Paso, what has happened? Let's go to the sales on the left hand side to check that out. And then within the sales area, I'll close up the hamburger because it's making me hungry. We're going to go into the all sales transaction uh, tab and we can see here. Hold on, I'm in the wrong area. Sorry about that. Hoping the hamburger expenses. We're buying stuff, we're not selling stuff. That hamburger confused me because I was like, it made me hungry and then I my mind got clouded so if I go over here then here we go there's the purchase order now we could sort this by purchase order if we wanted to just check out the purchases orders is only and so that's how we can kind of track it internally even though it's not something that's uh, on the financial statement uh, it's not going to be in the bills of course because it's not going to be a bill but we can take a look at it and a vendor by vendor basis where you've got this nice little blue thing up there which is going to give you the purchase order stuff so there it is now after we get the purchase order if i select the drop down we can we're going to no, most likely create a bill from it so when we get all those guitars in the box if they're if they're not stolen from us before we can get our hands on them so that we can do our business for crying out loud i mean what is wrong with people well okay if we get them then there's probably going to be a bill inside of it. So within the bill inside of it, we can use this uh, information to create the bill, right? That would be uh, the process, the next process that we can do. So here's the purchase order from the vendor of Epiphone. All right, let's do another one because this is good times. Rock it and roll it with, a, with Ultra Vase another time. We're going to hit the plus button up top, another purchase order. This time we're going to say it's a new vendor. 
people are coming in they're requesting gibson guitars we're like i don't know we never bought from gibson before but let's do it gibson we're going to add gibson usa and so it's a new vendor i'm going to tab and all i need is this asterisk one here but if it was a vendor that i'm pur pur purchasing from all the time i would probably want more information for their contact information because we would like to build a good relationship if that's going to be one of our primary vendors for inventory as opposed to other vendors where we don't really care too much like the telephone company or whatnot all i need is really the name but i'm just going to keep it at that we would of course want the email address if we're going to be sending it to them uh what happened Gibson USA tab just save it okay and then we would want the email address if we're going to send it to them by email shipping we're going to give it to our, our normal shipping we're not going to ship it to a customer uh did I do a date last time did I have the right date uh let's just keep I think it's right 112 we'll keep it at that and then we're going to say that the shipping is there no tags once again we're not using a category but items because we're purchasing inventory all right so let's do this one we're going to say the product i already set this one up it's a, a g i u s a is what we called it now we already had the product by the way because we set up the product even though we didn't set up the vendor because there was no vendor that we owed money to at that point in time even though we did have some gibsons already so we had done business with them uh before so i might have misspoke a little bit before but uh so there it is gibson so gibson is on the books we're going to be purchasing that no transactions going to be affected right here same kind of setup you can do down below but instead of going save and close this time we're going to go save and new because we're going to do another one before we took take a look at the other one this one will also be a, a new vendor for us although again i think we already have some stuff from them but we didn't put the vendor in our center because 